will get started. Hello. <laughs> um, okay, so let me go through a few administrative things again. It's good to repeat, and then we'll <coughs> get started. Uh, you see the lecture schedule. <coughs> I just want to remind you that there will not be a lecture in the f on the 25th of February. So we have lecture next week, and then not on the 25th, because I have a meeting that I have to go to, and I won't be here. So um, you can work on your own, work on the homework assignments that are due on March 11th. <coughs> okay. <coughs> um, some people have asked me about uh, former exams. And uh, if you go on uh, Fronter, there's a room that's called Abdelling for Logistics, Economy, and Somethings, fog that everyone can see. And then under that room, you can go to Tidlia Exam and Opgave, and then you can see it. So let me see if I can get in and, and show you where it is. So if I go to rooms, and I can display all rooms. Um, should be a OK. OK, so there's a room here that's called of Delling in the, uh, this is Department for Logistics, Economy, and Samsung's Fund. You click on that. And then you can go to this one, this folder called Tilia Exams. This is earlier exams. And then you go under Ida. And then you can see there's several that are from uh, seven, Ida 725. That's this class. And there's ones from <coughs> um, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. But um, these are all taught by different people. It doesn't mean that I will use the same type of exam, but I will certainly look at but you can find them on Fronter if you want to find them on Fronter. Okay. Okay. Um, the next thing <coughs> is um, under lectures. I put three samples from the handed in homeworks. And we have a lot of people taking this class. So it's not that these are the best, and that's not that they're the worst, but it's just three that I will use to, to talk about the homeworks with. And um, you don't get graded on the homeworks, but they should help you with the exam later on. So what we're going to do in the first part of lecture today is uh, we're going to go through the, the ex ex exercise number one. And then in the second part of the lecture, we'll do chapter five. <coughs> so to, in order to go through the first part, um, I'm going to give you printouts of some people's exams, of, of exercises. And um, don't pick your own, pick somebody else's. And uh, I want everyone, since there's not a lot of people, uh, you can pick uh, like three each. And we'll go through them, and you c we can uh, grade them. 
And the ones that have numbers, you can grade yes, correct, or not correct. And the ones that don't have numbers, you can just give like a good or could be better or something like that. Okay, but it doesn't count for your grade, but it's just nice for people to to know how they did. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, just um, pick uh, three and send some back. And pick three and send some back. And pick three. Maybe if there's some in Norwegian, the Norwegian people should pick those. <laughs> <laughs> so. so let me see if I can pull up the, the exercise questions. So did you get enough? You only have you have one each. Then we might have some extra here. <laughs> Can I have um, some that you don't want? OK. So. <laughs> OK. Um, one, two, three, four. OK. Did you get uh, some? Okay, so you you each have three. Did you get three? And um, does anyone not have three? Do you have two? Three, you have three. Did you have two? Or you have you have many? <laughs> you have four and you have three, okay. <laughs> Did you get three? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so the, the, the first question was uh, two software projects are proposed to a startup company, from a startup company, and the Alpha project will cost 150000 to develop and is expected to have an annual cash flow of uh, 48000 The beta project will have a cost of 200000 to develop and is expected to have an annual cash flow of 50000 the company is very concerned about their cash flow. Using the payback period, which project is better from a cash flow standpoint and why? This you want to? Yes, sure. Um, how about this one? OK, so here's one. I don't know if this person is here. Is I here? <laughs> OK. Um, and it's, um, we can use this as an example of the response. Um, the following calculations are, collect, uh, are conducted in order to rank the two projects by the length of the payback period. And you can see that the alpha project is divided by the annual cash flow. 
and it has a payback period of 3.75 years. And the beta project is divided by the cash flow, the cost divided by the cash flow, and has a payback period of four years. So based on the payback period alone, we would say this is shorter than this, and therefore we would rank this alpha project before the beta project. So this was a very uh, straightforward question. And this was um, a nice uh, response here, uh, because they said that the company should be careful about selecting alpha over beta, because it's really just um, a quarter of a year difference, and that the annual cash flow is actually greater in the B project. So if you consider other things, you might, in some cases, uh, choose the B project, the beta project over the alpha project. So that was a good response. OK, so you can go through your three examples there and see if you can check off if those were correct or not. So I've um, graded six of them. <laughs> OK. Did anyone find they had a problem? You don't have to say who it was. OK. Yeah. Uh, if they get it right, you can say OK. Oh, okay. And then if they get it wrong, you can say wrong or something. <laughs> so. Um, OK, so now question number two. Um, yeah. So a five-year project has a projected net cash flow of uh, 15,000, 25,000, 30,000, 20,000, 15,000 in the next five years. It will cost 50000 to implement the project. If the required rate of return is 20%, con conduct a discounted cash flow calculation to determine the net present value. Uh, this one was a little bit more difficult because I, um, um, I received some questions about s some people didn't know how to put it into Excel. Uh, there is also, I can go back to another example. Um, where was it? Let me just go back here. Say, um, yeah, this this one, for example, wrote out the formula, and the formula is also on page thirty-seven of edition six of the book. And you can see that um, how it is actually um, done. And then also uh, this one is another example that also wrote it out. And um, this should be a negative sign here. But, um, but the calculation comes out correctly. So this would be the computed at present value. <coughs> so you have the, the F is the net cash inflow for the period. And K is the rate of, ret is the rate of return. So it's 20%. And so you do the things. You do 1 plus 0.2 in parentheses first. And then you raise it to the, the power. And then uh, you divide the net cash flow inflow divided by this. 
for all of the years, and this should be a negative. So when you have this negative plus all of these positives, you get a bit of a positive there. And you could have done it by hand, or you could have done it in Excel. It's up to you how you do that. Um, let me find the question again. OK. <coughs> yeah, so again, that was pretty straightforward. You should be able to check off if these were correct or not. And so I'll just look at this, these. That's OK. Uh, some people use a calculator. They have a nice, well, I guess it's an online calculator, and they figured it out well. So you don't only have to use um, uh, Excel. It's not the only option. They use something called calculatorsoup.com. And then um, somebody did it by, I guess, uh, hand, and the calculation did not come out correctly. Um, it is possible to get it wrong. Okay. Uh, does anyone have a question about um, the present value and how to find it? Is it the, can I bring calculators to the exam if we are getting questions? Yeah, like if, this? if we get questions like this, you can bring calculators. <laughs> No, but I will say if you can bring calculators to the exam. <laughs> but it's mm, there's lots of things you can use calculators for, so we don't know exactly <laughs> which questions. Yeah. yeah, and I will, I will probably like from now automatically include that because there's likely to be some sort of calculations in the exam. So yeah. some of it, like. Hmm. Uh, a and B. It's not that hard, but if you have But it takes it, time. It takes yeah, yeah, it takes time. Um, <coughs> you can also, yes, you can write it down and and do it by hand, but it takes time. I understand that. So, <coughs> okay, so number three is the custom byte company has set up a weighted scoring matrix for evaluation of potential projects. Below are three projects under consideration. Uh, <coughs> using the scoring matrix below, which project would you rate the highest, the lowest? If the uh, weight for the strong sponsor is changed from 0.2 to 0.5, will the project selection change? What are the three highest weighted project scores uh, with the new weight? Uh, why is it important for that the weights smear the critical strategic factors? Okay, so in a question like this, it's it, again, it's <coughs> it's not that hard, but it would be also important that you understand the reasoning behind this. So being able to answer Part C is is probably the most important part of the question. <coughs> okay, let me just see what I have. Um, so, if we go back to uh, number one here, um, so they put this in Excel, and they said the highest rated project was five num with 107, the lowest one was number two with 57. This is this indicates to what extent the different projects are corresponding with the company strategy. The highest, the higher the weighted total, the stronger the project corresponds to the company strategy. That's under the assumption that the weights and the scores for each project in each criteria are correct. 
In uh, B, they change the weight for the strong spon sponsor from 2 to 5. And of course, that ends up uh, changing the weighted sums. And the projects are then rated. Uh, project 3 is number 1. Project 5 is number 2. And project uh, three, uh, 1 is number 3. And this is correct. <coughs> Person responsible for selecting the project should especially note that projects 3 and 5 have almost the exact same weighted totals. Uh, the reason for the fairly vast change in ranking <coughs> is that uh, in a certain criteria, certain criteria have a widespread scoring, and scores are ranging all the way from 1 to 9. So this was their reasoning. Uh, they say for Part C, the <coughs> weighted totals should represent to what extent each project matched the overall company strategy. It is important to pay close attention to the weights of each criteria. The importance of each criteria in regards to the company strategy will vary between the different criteria. The next, next the different projects will score differently in each criteria. Thus, the different weights need to balance the high and low project scores in the high and low priority category <coughs> criteria in order to take account for the difference effect on each criteria. Small weight changes can have a big difference in the projects. So this was a good response. <coughs> it, it reflects that uh, if you, the weights should ref reflect the, cri the criteria of the company. And if they don't, you're not going to get a, a good reading <coughs> on this. <coughs> I had uh, <coughs> another response. Um, this was, I think it was C again. <coughs> Um, they <coughs> they got the first part right, and then they put in um, the determining weights of the criteria were based on the goals and objectives of the company for the next years. This way determines the priorities for achieving the objectives, thus requiring a strategic uh, planning. So that was okay, but probably not as uh, a good a response as the previous one. Um, this one. Because through the weights, the projects will be compared, taking into account each factors which lead to the success of the organization. Again, this was not as good, but the basic idea. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so uh, if you can look at your examples again. So now we're up to question number four. <coughs> uh, you work for Barbet uh, Electronics. Your R&D people believe they have come up with an affordable technology uh, that will double the capacity of the existing MP3 players and use audio formats 
that is superior to MP3. Uh, the project is codenamed KYSO, knock your socks off. Uh, what kind of project management structure would you recommend uh, they use for the knock your socks off project? And what information would you like to have to make this recommendation and why? So um, it's, it's important to get, um, first you, you need to be able to, you, you're, you're going to have to pick a, a structure, a management structure, based on our notes that we talked about when we talked about management structures in the chapter. Um, I think that was chapter three. Or yeah, that was uh, chapter three. We talked about different types of management structures and the kinds of questions that you need to be able to answer in order to select that structure. <coughs> so we talked about certain criteria. <coughs> Again, if I look at uh, this one. Um, so this, uh, this answer, I've read through this before, and it gives a very good response. Uh, it asks a lot of the very critical questions that are needed. And then uh, after asking, if saying if we have the information for these questions, then we can pick a kind of uh, structure, management structure, based on those, on those answers. So they say that um, they ask, uh, uh, what is the, yeah, is, is, is this a very strategic or competitive project? So this is very important in order to judge how the company competes. Such information will <coughs> answer such questions like, will the speed of the project delivery be more important than the cost? So this is about prioritizing uh, your, in <coughs> your investment. Uh, you what do you prioritize in your project? Do you prioritize uh, time to market? Do you pri prioritize the cost of the project? Do you prioritize the quality of the project? or the performance. So that helps you to decide how you will uh, allow your scope to change over time or not change. And then uh, the project management um, important, uh, is the project management important to the success of the firm? Uh, this is useful information because there is no need to have an organization vast, vastly adapted to project activities if the number of projects is low. Uh, is there much project activity? There sh this should be reflected in the organization structure. How is the, um, re this should be resources of availability. Uh, this tells us uh, to what extent we will need to build an organization structure around sharing sparse resources. <coughs> How much autonomy will the project need in order to be successful? This tells you the different kinds of control and autonomy that, do, that the project manager needs to have in uh, comparison to the other line managers in the organization. How is the organization culture? Uh, th this would be a strong indicator of how the organization needs uh, to be built. The structure needs uh, to represent the personality of the organization. And they said based on if they had the answers to these questions, they're making some assumptions that uh, so they said, um, for instance, uh, since it's a technology-oriented company, we assume that the, it's, they need speed and innovation. The project activity is mostly, is a most likely <coughs> big part of the organization. Several people with special competencies need to work <coughs> on different projects, so and <coughs> they need a project-oriented organization. The organization culture is most likely uh, used to sudden changes um, in routines and work tasks. And all of these assumptions lead to the conclusion that it, they require a matrix organization. Uh, this organization underpins the values such as fast, fast delivery, cross-functional integration, uh, which are assumed to be important for the company. So uh, for this uh, question, uh, they answer well. And it's not because the matrix organization is the only answer to this question, but it's because they gave the reasons why they chose matrix organization. So then uh, that would be a correct response. 
Okay, so you can actually have different answers, but you need to support why you have different answers. Okay. So if everyone could take a look at their um, response. There was one here that I, I think uh, was not a correct response. I don't know which one it is. It wasn't that one. Yeah, this one. So like this response was not a good response to this question because it doesn't it doesn't address the questions here. So the same thing would go in the exam. If you get <coughs> a question that's asking you what kind of management structure and what do you need to know to choose this management structure, you should not answer with something about the technological product and process, which is not related to the question. Okay. So I would not grade this as a good response. <coughs> and uh, I'm sorry if I put your thing up here. I don't know whose it is. <laughs> so. I had some people that actually missed answering that question. That, of course, isn't good either. Did anyone get a different type of structure as a response to that question? OK. Uh, what kind of structure did you get? OK. Mm. Then. Functional organization. Did um, did they give reasons why? Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, I I would I would probably disagree and not to, and say that they didn't cover enough of the issues because they only gave. Uh, they didn't look at all of the strategic uh, factors. So, uh, but uh, the other one was uh, dedicated teams. Did they give reasons? Okay, but that's important to like list those factors. So that was a better response. Um, in terms of you can pick something else. It doesn't have to be matrix. It could be dedicated teams, but you have to say why. So, yeah. Dedicated team was, I chose that. It's mm -hmm. more, more, the project is more easy and mm -hmm. interesting. And you have to generate more profit for the firm if they actually uh, succeed with it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's better to, for the company to uh, have people just working with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And not sharing resources with other mm -hmm. departments. So that's yes, you can say that, and that's a valid reason for that. So that would be an acceptable response. <coughs> yeah. um, <coughs> yes. Okay. So then uh, we can go to question number five. Oh, you had a question. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, what? You mentioned what's the exact structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
work breakdown structure. No, that would not. That was not what the question was asking. So um, then th they were asking, what is the organizational structure for the company? The company would use to to manage the project, and uh, so then that would be an incorrect response. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's uh, go to number five, and um, <coughs> this is a quite long question. It's about a company that uh, wants to uh, adopt the ERP system for the whole company, and they have a main office in Norway and uh, three offices, production plants in uh, their production plants in Norway and in Germany, Lithuania, and England. And they have a number of functions that they want to be able to implement with this new system, and they need to evaluate various systems. So the question here was to develop a work breakdown structure for the entire project. You are free to suggest all activities you feel are necessary, but you have to include uh, selection of system vendor, negotiation, customization, acceptance, testing, training, data conversion, and <coughs> loading. And uh, that's the transfer of the data from the old system to the new system test periods, and system takeover. So it's a lot of um, activities. Uh, the work breakdown structure should also show how the new system is put into operation in different locations. So you need to cover a lot of activities and also different locations. And uh, all of this uh, is considering a number of different systems. So I will again look at our examples here. And this is a bit uh, more difficult to see, so I wonder if I can, um, I don't know if I can re-rotate it, I can make it smaller. Uh, no, <laughs> I guess that's not rotating, that's refreshing. <laughs> Okay, well, mm. rotate clockwise. There we go. That's good. And then um, make it seventy five percent. Well, maybe I'll make it bigger. Okay, so this is still not big enough to see, but We'll do it a bit at a time. OK, so we have the whole system. Um, and then they have highlighted some of the things, selection of the system vendor, negotiation, acceptance, testing, customization, training, uh, conversion, test period, and system takeover. And the way they integrated the other countries is they only integrated them in the system's takeover port because the central office has done all of the other uh, activities. And um, the system is for, this for the whole company. So they might have included these also in other areas. For example, in training, when they're doing conducting training, they could have also included the other countries in as lower levels in conducting training. But the idea is that the the major, um, um, the major deliverables are at the top, uh, at the higher levels, and the sub deliverables are at the lower levels. And then at the lowest level, they should have uh, work packages. And um, so this one doesn't actually state what the work packages are. Uh, if I go, we'll see another example. Mm. Uh, this one is uh, a bit different from the other one. <coughs> it has a, a menu here, and it says the complete project, major deliverables, supporting deliverables, lower sub-deliverables, work packages. And here they have the <coughs> uh, different types of work packages should be the activities that take place to complete <coughs> the 
describe the activities that take place to complete the sub deliverables. And you would usually have an accounting uh, area associated with each of that. So this uh, takes into consideration that. Um, and I see there's some things here for the countries in terms of the feasibility evaluation. Um, but it's like uh, data insertion, this is uh, up take over and upload, I guess. But they're not uh, included in that. So uh, this has some good elements, but it's also some things that are a bit strange. Um, this one uses another structure. And the good thing about this is that they make use of the uh, numerical system. You can see uh, this is, for example, the coding system that it's used in step five on page 115 in the book. And this shows um, um, how you have the major deliverables, the sub uh, deliverables, down to the work package layers. But it's, it should uh, identify which ones are work packages. And this is a <coughs> also represented visually in, in the table. And I haven't checked because it's so uh, small to see if it's dividing uh, or d doing some of the tasks by country as well. And it seems like it doesn't really address that factor. So each of these have certain uh, aspects that are good and other things that, that I say would be are a bit lacking. Um, and if you get, the worst is if you don't try to do anything. <laughs> and then the, the, you can have other kinds of um, um, things that are taken into consideration. So we have uh, <coughs> figure four or five on page 114 is an example of an integration of a work breakdown structure and an organization breakdown structure. So if you were to do a work breakdown structure, you would do basically the top part of this figure. And that includes the major deliverables, the sub-deliverables, and uh, the work packages that are identified uh, with cost account numbers. Uh, but you don't need to go into the organization structure. So you would have to just do like the top part of this, this image. And you should take into consideration uh, these <coughs> the question that has, um, have you included all of the activities that were requested? The activities should be in the work packages. And then uh, have you included the operations that of the new system in different locations, considering that the whole system is is for the entire company and that it goes into operation in, in various places. So I would uh, look for all of these elements and I would look that it addresses all of these uh, activities and, and the different locations. So, um. Yeah, well they talk about that there's uh, these four countries so that's what they mean by different lo the different locations. You have to have, the whole thing is uh, the central office is in Norway and they have to be able to pick the system and uh, implement the system and train for it and all of these activities have to be done centrally. But also there's certain things that need to be done locally and that would be like maybe training and implementation would have to be done locally. So there's some aspects of this that need to be uh, defined out to under, at the lower levels for all of the locations. But not everything. So not like selection of the system, for example. Or negotiation or customization. Maybe not even acceptance testing, but probably training and um, maybe this uploading, 
Um, there might be some aspects that are shared. Yeah. And I think this is a kind of a difficult question or mm. a difficult bad example because it's so technical. And it's technical. <laughs> I guess it's uh, for m it's like a more information systems oriented. So I don't know what other kind of projects yeah. you expect to be yeah. managing. Mm. Yeah. I think it, as the first assignment uh, and the first work, like this first DPS, we should call it easy. Maybe it should be a bit easier. Mm. Yeah, but uh, you can also do the exercises in the book as well. So it's it's just a, maybe it was just to introduce something that wasn't actually already in the book, um, and uh, you're not really getting graded on it, so it's uh, okay to. Oh, but it's a learning process. Yeah, but then you you must be. I would think you'd be learning from this example because <laughs> it's. Uh, Yeah, that's this that's a very big task, but I understand. Yeah, let me see. Mm -hmm. I don't think that this one uh, addresses that at all. And um, this one, I thought did this one did the rollout so system takeover. So this is yes. So put into operation is a system rollout. But it could include other things as well. So in other words, maybe it should have been including also this conversion and loading and test period and training also. So you might have had this rollout to all uh, this to all countries should be under this area and this area and this area as well. But it's it's kind of like how people interpret the question. And if they've, um, I would have preferred to do it under the all of these areas. Um, so you need to think about what needs to be done. If you have an accounting system in four countries, and then the central office buys a new accounting system, so what do you need to do at the different locations in order to use that accounting system? Maybe the central office has um, they've looked at the options and they chose which one they want to purchase. And maybe the central office has gone to the vendor that sells the accounting system and says, we need it to work a certain way, so they do the customization. But then when they get to actually who's going to use the accounting system, they need to use it everywhere. I think uh, the central office can create the material for the training course, but maybe they need to conduct the training everywhere. And then the, the, for the implementation, uh, they can do the conversion and loading of the information into the accounting system. Maybe they could do that centrally, and then they, but they, and maybe they could do a test period centrally. But then they they have to be able to change the different countries' accounting systems to the new one, and that's a rollover to the new system has to be done in each place. So then this is correct to place this like this. But um, I, what I find missing in this example is like the organization of the deliverable and the sub-deliverables are fine. But I find missing is uh, what are the uh, work packages and where are the activities at the lowest level. So that's why on page 114 they show that there's actually a, a lower level of um, work activities, and that these work activities are often described also in this uh, coding structure. So some of the others uh, might have addressed th this uh, work packages. Uh, but um, uh, there's, no, I don't, there's no coding structure here. I don't see any coding structure. But there's work packages mentioned. And here, there's a coding structure 
but it doesn't really say that these are the work packages. I assume these are the work packages. And then this one doesn't address all of the countries as far as I can see, but maybe I'm not looking at it closely enough. So there's something not completely right with each of these, but uh, they each have something that is uh, a good uh, point to these exercises. So um, I guess I, I won't ask you, you, you don't need to grade the last question. Uh, whoever sees this uh, video can go in and, and interpret whether or not they think their response was good based on this, uh, this lecture. And then um, that's another thing is I am not going to be able to grade ex all of these homeworks. You have to really depend on these lecture periods to get responses on the homeworks because there's uh, a lot of people registered for this course and I don't have the resources to, to grade individual homeworks. So uh, we're going to take a break now. You can take like a 10 minute break or something, come back at 20 after, and then we'll start the chapter. Could I ha can everybody just like pass forward the homeworks again?